I'm Julia Westfall and I'm the owner of Hera Hub DC and um, uh, we are a co-working space located up in Friendship Heights and have been open for over five years and one of the things that we really love to do is to share the work of local women artists in our space. Um, it gives us a chance to have great artwork um, and also support women in the local community um, to help them grow and build their uh, their art business. We've been, you know, I've, you know, I probably should have counted up how many artists we've had in the space since we opened, but uh, we have, you know, five to 10 a year. So we've probably, I don't know, 30, 40 artists that have shown their work um, over time. So I'm very excited about that. And we are selling work through our space. We're not technically a gallery, but we do have people. And I know that there are also people on here um, that have bought some work through Hera Hub and also bought just some of Emily's work um, uh, through her directly. So, uh, but we're very delighted. Uh, believe it or not, Emily installed her show here in early January of 2020. So we've been living with her fabulous work and with the work of Madison Bowles, who is also on this call. Um, since that time, they were so gracious to let us uh, keep hanging their work in our space because we have been open three days a week since, um, uh, since the end of May. Um, and so it's, uh, we have a lot of wall space here. So if they weren't, weren't so gracious, um, you know, I'm sure we'd be staring down some pretty <laughs> dire blank walls because we've gotten really used to having beautiful art here. Um, so, but what I want to do is really just take, just let Emily spend some time talking about um, her work and her inspiration. You know, this is something that we typically do when we have an online, um, I mean, we have an in-person um, opening reception is we have the chance for the artists to kind of share more about their work. And, and I felt like it was a great idea to do it again now because um, the reality has become that this is the way we're going to be doing things for a while. But we don't, um, as a result of that, we don't need to uh, be, you know, living in, you know, in a, in a vacuum without beautiful art and things like that that we can learn about and that we can share. I know that some people are, are buying art now because they're, uh, they're they're working more from home, spending more time in their homes, so they're really interested in in having beautiful things um, that uh, that will create a, a nicer home environment for themselves. Because we we all are spending so much more time there. Um, but anyway, so uh, but that's just a little bit about where we are right now. But I want to go ahead and turn it over to Emily because it's really about her and um, and her inspiration. So I'm going to have her share. Um, uh, about her, some um, information about her bio and what she's been doing and what inspires her for her work. And really also is how have these last few months really been different um, for her in really selling artwork and, and really being inspired in this time to even create artwork, <laughs> you know, over these past few months. And so Emily, if you want to unmute and join me, um, Thank you, Julia. Can you hear me? Yes, absolutely. Okay, good. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Julia. That was a lovely introduction. And I just want to say it's been so nice having my work at Hera Hub, and particularly at this time where we're seeing historic moments for female leaders, it feels even more special to have this opportunity to exhibit. So thank you. Um, and thank you all for being here today on a Monday afternoon and um, coming to my virtual, my first virtual show. Um, just a little background about myself. I studied fine arts as an undergraduate and then got my master's degree in art education. I was teaching for over 15 years, art to high school, elementary, preschool and also painting a little bit on the side, showing a little bit on the side, but really about four or five years ago, I got very serious about my painting practice and focused on that and putting my work in shows and selling my work more actively. And the last two years I've been, I've done a number of exhibits and now have my work not only in the Washington area, but in California and New York and Alabama. So I'm really starting to spread beyond my neighborhood. 
Um, so this show was called Reinvent Hope and it was a time, it sort of encompasses this time, but it encompasses many themes in my work. And one of the themes of my work is a visual commentary on what's happening around us. And um, Emily, I don't know if you can switch to the first slide. Great, thank you. Um, this is a piece I did uh, early on in the pandemic and just this separating and grouping of people and this technique I would do with dots with a color gradation going from light to dark and you know using ink to surround certain pods and also showing these pods that are on their own and those are ones that I think a lot about right now just people who are not near family or friends in this quarantine period. We can go to the next one. Another source of my inspiration is the natural world and these are colors from New Mexico. We took a family trip there and I just loved these oranges, browns against these bluish purple skies and large shapes of color. It's another thing that I'm often inspired by in experiences and the natural world. And then this is something I just saw these scarves like flowing and wanted to capture that just fluid motion and that curve of a line. And you'll see I work a lot with blues and oranges. It's one of my favorite color palettes and just trying to capture that feeling of movement. This piece was inspired by a painting I saw at a friend's house with these sort of large blocks of dark colors. And I really liked it and I came home and I started working with it. And it actually was the first piece that went into a group show that was curated by a local cons art consultant named Caitlin Berry, who's well known in the area. And it was just sort of my first getting back into the art world and exhibiting my work. And it's one of my favorites. And this one um, is also in that same style with large shapes and dark colors. If you look closely, you can see sort of a yellow and green undertone. And I had a whole other painting underneath this one. And then I painted on top of it, but I still kept elements of that first painting. And that's just something that is part of the painting process and just the layering of color and what comes through just still matters. And this is one of my favorite pieces that we have hanging in our dining room. Uh, this is a piece that reflects on a style I've been working on for a long time, just this kind of blending of colors and patterns. And this piece was on exhibit at the Corcoran Transformer auction a couple years ago. And it's also one of my favorites. And it's this, if you look closely, you'll see a pattern and then you'll see it kind of breaks up. And it's really a commentary on the patterns we see throughout history and in our jobs and experiences and communities and just sort of when you see that pattern happening again that you can pivot and you can change it and certainly right now we're at this pivotal moment in the history of our country and this piece is particularly important right now. Um, this is a piece that I did early on in the pandemic and it was also part of this working with dots and color gradation and it was when everything shut down and we sort of went from this community living to just moving apart and sort of this lack of control and you can you know this floating of shape of just this uncertainty that lies ahead and this moving away um, if anyone knows i have a ten and a half year old little girl who has extremely long thick curly beautiful hair and it just, it's amazing to see that the colors hit it, and when the light hits it, you see different colors and movement and texture. And it's, it's really just an amazing piece of art. <laughs> so I, I was inspired by my daughter's hair and I made this piece. Uh, this one as well, I did um, in that same uh, inspiration. And both of these pieces are on canvas where the other pieces are all uh, acrylic on paper. 
this is a smaller piece on board, which is sort of a harder surface and it's 10 by 10. And it's again, a lot of layering of these dots and colors. And this was uh, last winter, this was in a show and just sort of feeling this urban life and layering, but also things were just starting to come out in terms of the time that we're in and the coronavirus and um, the depth of color and gradation. This was also in that same show and you can see I'm still very drawn to this color palette with the oranges and blues and uh, working with the dots. Um, this is another smaller piece on board, 10 by 10, and it's a part of a series I started a couple years ago called Boundary Lines. This has been a very popular amongst my clientele. I started it um, when we were talking about walls and borders with Mexico and sort of this feeling of where are we drawing lines with countries and communities and laws and who makes the rules and just sort of this feeling of the earth beneath you shifting and you know feeling very pulled like the polarization i was just feeling in our country and just trying to capture that again with my favorite color palette of blues and oranges and this last piece i did on friday and you when we were talking about doing the show we were looking at last week and Julia's like, why don't we wait till after the election, <laughs> which seemed like a good idea. And um, I'm glad we did because I, I literally just did this on Friday and just this feeling of not knowing where things are going and what's gonna happen, but against this solid background that we're just built on these core values that keeps us going as a country. And even right now, I feel that you know, decisions have been made and we should be moving forward, but that uncertainty is really just so under the surface and that kind of yellow jagged line is just kind of moving along this tough foundation. Um, so this is my most recent piece and, I'll, and also speaking to the times that we're living in. And this is also on canvas. Um, and this last piece here is a work on paper, acrylic on paper. And again, you're seeing like the layering of dots and the gradation of color. Uh, this time I was really trying to let the white of the paper come through. And um, this concept of us, you know, urban life, the density of population and people sort of on top of each other, but kind of breaking around um, these little pods still with quarantine and just trying to capture the movement and intensity of, of urban life. And I think that's the last one, is that right? Yes. Um, so if anyone has any questions for me about any of these pieces, I'm happy to answer them. Yeah, I would love to, to get um, people to ask some questions of Emily about her work. So you can, Hi, is that is that uh, Glenn? Glenn, hey, Emily, thank you thanks so much. Uh, really exciting to see your work and hear you talk about it. Uh, great seeing you yesterday at the uh, soccer game and talking. So um, I was wondering if you could just maybe uh, talk for a few minutes about uh, your your process that you go through, um, simple or complex. Um, in terms of like, th you know, thinking about what what things you are choosing to paint, um, and then the actual like painting process. Um, you know, any 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 comments on on your 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 sort of general process of how you um, approach approach a new work, approach canvas, approach a new concept, that sort of thing. Uh, that's a really good question. So sometimes I'm sketching in a sketchbook and I'll take a sketch from there and make a larger painting. Sometimes it's literally just a blank canvas and just, you know, getting started. I think so much about painting for me is like the unconscious and what's sort of coming out as I'm painting. And then I, I sort of see it as it's happening. And sometimes I'm really not happy with what I like and I paint over it. Um, 
And also the feedback from my work is so appreciative. Like this painting behind me is a recent work I did during the pandemic. And it was, I did a couple of them called Woman and just sort of reflecting on, you know, how the role of a woman is evolving and changing. And certainly there's been a lot of attention around it. And, you know, I liked this piece, okay, but a friend of mine was like, this is a really strong piece. This is really great. And so it's, you know, it's just really nice to hear other people's feedback on it because um, I, I'm not always, you know, that excited about what I've made, but if somebody else is, you know, that's always very nice. And ultimately, you know, I hope that people have, and I see Phyllis here has one of my paintings in the background. And um, it's just so nice for me to know, and Amy has a piece, and Andrea, lots of my parents and my in-laws, that it's so nice for me to know that you can turn a corner of your house, and certainly right now, and see, you know, something that, that you really like and you enjoy. And, um, you know, it's wellness to have art in your life. So I don't know if that answers the question, but it's so much of my process is like what I'm experiencing, what I'm hearing, what I'm seeing, what I'm feeling, and then just putting it down on paper or canvas or, or now I'm working on board. Thank you. Great. Great. Thanks so much. Um, does anybody else have a question? Because I have a little bit of a follow up to that, if you don't mind. Um, I was just thinking, how, how long does it usually take? for you to actually do a painting? I'm sure it, it varies, but um, is there like a, a general thing or do you like work on something and then put it aside and go back to it? Um, that's a good question. So sometimes I'm working on something like this behind me, I worked on for several hours and then I would come back to it and change it. Um, that piece I was talking about breaking in, I had done, there's a whole other painting under it and I went on on top of it. This pods piece that I think everyone can see right now, like I literally sat down and just did that one day and, um, you know, in one sitting. So, it, you know, it varies for different things. Um, I'm now getting a lot of requests for things. So I am doing a lot with boundary lines and these dot paintings. And so really focusing on the techniques I've used with those and spending more time with that. Oh, great. Well, thank you. Thank you. So who else has a question? So Julia um, and Emily, I actually have a question about winter tree that's in my background. I didn't want to, I wasn't sure if I could ask a question about my individual piece, but you know, Emily, I attended your show, as you know, when you first opened at Hera Hub and fell in love with your work. And then when I came back, um, this piece, Winter Tree, was actually at Hera Hub. It had swapped out, I guess, for something you sold. So I don't know much about it, but I just fell in love with it. And as you know, bought it sort of online with you <laughs> after seeing it once. So I am actually curious about the backstory because I um, always enjoy telling people the backstory of the art that I have. And now that it's in my regular Teams and Zoom background, people always say, what is that tree? So. <laughs> Um, well, I'm really glad you have Winter Tree and you're enjoying it. That was actually a very pivotal piece. Um, I have a, as I said, a 10 and a half year old daughter. So I stayed home with her when she was little and she was in preschool. I mean, that was just something I was finally, she was like having a nap and I was taking a break and just, you know, doing some me time and I painted that tree. And um, it was really after a long hiatus of painting, probably a couple years that I started painting that one. and. You know, again, for me, a lot of my painting has to do the subconscious. And if you'll see the patterning on that one in the back, I spent some time in Kenya and Tanzania in college, and I studied a lot of African art. So there's sort of a symbolism of some of those patterns that reflect to that study. And that it just, it's, it, that was actually makes perfect sense because I had just taken a break from painting a lot from, for a while, and then you just sort of start where you left off. Um, but I'm so glad you enjoy it. Yeah, thank you. I do enjoy it. And I appreciate the backstory on the um, African print because um, I thought there somewhere there would be a community theme given I had seen some of your dot work and the boundary work. So mm -hmm. thanks. Wow. 
that's fascinating because I wasn't even familiar with that, uh, that backstory either. Cause you know, I mean, I think you brought it in one day, everybody was ooing and aahing and then you put it on the wall and then Phyllis came in and was like, oh, so it really didn't last very long in our space. So, <laughs> but anyways, it's, it's a beautiful piece. It really is a beautiful piece. So who else has a question? I do. Okay. Hi, I'm Allison. Sorry for being on and off camera. I'm doing various things in my house and I don't want to be distracting. <laughs> but I'm right. Working. Um, so I, I don't know if it's so much of a question as like just a comment, but I, I find it interesting that Emily, that your work is abstract, but it's so grounded in what's happening in the world and narrative, like personal, kind of like how you're interpreting what's happening around you in your own backyard or in the world. And, and I'm just curious if, I guess if that, I, I know it's some earlier on, you were doing more realistic work like landscapes and the like more kind of image-based works and i um, curious if you kind of feel differently working in the more abstract style now um, in terms of how you kind of incorporate the narrative or the themes or what you're thinking about into the work because it's not often in the art world that you see abstract painting that is so grounded in in a you know in in uh I don't know, I guess things that are actually taking place. Um, I mean, it's, uh, I felt like originally I was starting from such a place of um, sort of a personal feeling and then it has evolved into this feeling of what's happening around me has now come into the work and it's come in such a very, um, clear way. I don't think of myself as very political, but I do have strong feelings about humanity and I always have. And so I'm feeling like in this time that is just coming in to what I'm doing. And, um, you know, sometimes people get it right away. Like they read the title and they get it. And sometimes people see things totally differently, which is great because that is what art is and everyone has their own interpretations of it. And, um, you know, one person can love it and another person can hate it. And it's just, you know, it's so interesting that, you know, interpretation is, is um, to each his own. But um, I don't know if that really answers what I'm saying, but, or your question, but I'm, I'm definitely, you know, it's, it's a process that we're all on. It's a road that we're all on and it does change over time. And um, it's been, interesting even for me to see how things are taking different turns and certainly as I'm I'm actively selling more what people are asking me for is also been sort of an interesting piece like I was talking to somebody the other day who wants to do a show and she's like can you paint on glass and I was like I've never painted on glass but I will try it <laughs> and see what happens so um, it's just nice to be a part of the whole shifting and evolving relationships along the way and what art comes out of it. I do have another show for the locals here, um, another outdoor show. I know some of you are artists on the driveway, which was in my backyard and my neighbor's yard. And um, we're doing another one in Chevy Chase, DC. And um, Emily Thornton's gonna share the address. It's on, on Connecticut Avenue and the PNC Bank parking lot. And I think it's gonna be about 18 artists now. And it's a November 29th, 11 to four. And it's another outdoor show and we'll have hand sanitizer and masks and everyone following a, a route. So it'll be jewelers and painters and photographers and this time an author as well with his book. So if you're in the area, come by.